Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Our Savior's Lutheran Church. There is a place for you here. At our church, you won't find any perfect people. But you will find a community of people doing their best to grow closer to God. At our church, you will find worship through music and singing. At our church, you'll find prayer for each other. Prayer for our community. Prayer for the world. At our church, you'll find encouragement and a place to belong. At our church, we love God and we love others. That means you. That means you. Thank you for joining us today. Welcome to worship. Well, good morning. Good morning. I'm uh, Larry Iverson. I fill in about once a month here at uh, Our Saviors uh, so Jolene can have a little break. So uh, it's good to be with you. I see a lot of familiar faces as I've been here over the past few months, so it's good to be with you today. Uh, I wrote a little poem that kind of fits with the text today, so I'll uh, start that before, um, before Evelyn pro plays there. So, Standing on a rock makes us taller when life struggles makes us seem smaller. But God, our creator, hews strong stuff to endure when times grow bad or rough. So cling to the rock that doesn't crack because Jesus always has our back. Please join me in the order for confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who forgives all our sins, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown things we have done and things we have failed to do, turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. And our gathering song. Soli Deo Gloria.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, with all your faithful followers of every age, we praise you, the rock of our life. Be our strong foundation and form us into the body of your Son, that we may gladly minister in all the world through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Good morning. Good morning. So the first reading today will be from Isaiah chapter 51, verses 1 through 6. And now a reading from Isaiah. Listen to me, you that pursue righteousness, you that seek the Lord. Look to the rock from which you were hewn, and to the quarry from which you were dug. Look to Abraham your father, and to Sarah who bore you. For he was but one when I called him. But I blessed him, and he, and he made him many. For the Lord will comfort Zion. He will comfort all her waste places, and will make her wilderness like Eden, her desert like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness will be found in her, thanksgiving and the voice of song. Listen to me, my people, and give heed to me, my nation. For a teaching will go out from me, and my justice for a light to the peoples. I will bring near my deliverance swiftly. My salvation has gone out, and my arms will rule the peoples. The coastlands wait for me, and for my arm they hope. Lift up your eyes to the heavens, and look at the earth beneath, for the heavens will vanish like smoke. The earth will wear out like a garment, and those who live on it will die like gnats, but my salvation will be forever, and my deliverance will never be ended. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now the reading from the psalm this morning will be from Psalm 138, and I would ask the congregation to please read responsibly on the bolded verses while I will read the unbolded verses. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods I will sing your praise. I will bow down toward your holy temple and praise your holy name because of your steadfast love and faithfulness, for you have glorified your name and your word above all things. When I called, you answered me. You increased my strength within me. All the rulers of the earth will praise you, O Lord, when they have heard the words of your mouth. They will sing to, of the ways of the Lord, for great is the glory of the Lord. The Lord is high, yet cares for the lowly, perceiving the haughty from afar. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you keep me safe. You stretch out forth your hand against the fury of my enemies. Your right hand shall save me. You will make good purpose for me. O Lord, your steadfast love endures forever. Do not abandon the work of your hands. gospel comes to us from the 16th chapter of Matthew. Glory to you, o Lord. Now when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, some say John the Baptist, but others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say I am? 
Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he sternly ordered the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Christ. You may be seated. And I'd invite any children who are here to come forward. I have treats, if that's an incentive. <laughs> any children here? No? None here today. Okay. Oh, wait a minute. There's one. Yeah. You <laughs> uh, he's getting moral support here. <laughs> There's some bigger children this morning. That's good. <laughs> well, I have a couple slides up here. I don't know if you can see it. Um, do you remember anything? What's that... Uh, Part of what I wanted to talk about is what do we cling on to? So what's happening here in this? What are they clinging on to? Did you ever have a did you ever have a animal when you were growing up when you were a little kid? Do you remember? Did you have a teddy bear or a rabbit or a, you what did you have? You have lots of them. Okay, okay. <laughs> so this is just showing that sometimes people cling on to those animals when they're growing up, and it kind of gives them some comfort. Uh, so it's not an unusual thing. Sometimes it's a blanket. Does anybody remember their children holding on to a blanket uh, for kind of security? So uh, it can be things like that that you cling on to when you're younger. Uh, and then there's another slide here. There, how about that? What is that guy clinging to? rock. He's clinging to a rock, right? He's doing some rock climbing there, so he's smiling at least, so that's better than <laughs> looking at terror, but anyway, that's what rock climbers do. They have to cling on to those holes in the rock. Sometimes they're very little ledges and they're in very little gaps that they can, that they kind of train themselves to do so they don't fall, right? Uh, so I don't personally do that. Uh, I don't know how many of you do, but, uh, but some people like rock climbing, and that's important to cling to something. So in our lives, we cling on to different things. Sometimes they aren't so good for us. We hold on to things that are not so good. We hold on to resentment sometimes. Somebody's hurt you and you kind of don't like them anymore. And instead of working it out and trying to forgive each other, you just hold on to it. And we hold on to things in our lives. Sometimes we hold on to money too tightly. Sometimes we hold on to, uh, to other people maybe tighter than we should. And we don't give them freedom to grow. So we do that, we cling to a lot of things in this life. The lesson really from Isaiah and then uh, is really about what do we cling to? God says, I am the rock, cling to me, I won't fail you. So that's kind of the lesson for today. So, uh, so I have a treat for you, even for the uh, big kids here. So, <laughs> so here's fruit snack. Yeah. So, thank you. So, thank you for coming up, being brave. <laughs> well, what are the solid rocks in your life that you hold on to? What are those things that are your foundation? On my trip in June to Scotland, we saw castles and cathedrals built of stone and some on high, rugged hills, such as Edinburgh Castle. We hear in the text from Isaiah, Listen to me, you that pursue righteousness, you that seek the Lord, look to the rock from which you were hewn and to the quarry from which you were dug. Just down the road from Bear Creek Lutheran Church in rural Grand Meadow, uh, where I used to serve as lay pastor, is a quarry. 
I'm not sure the foundation stones uh, for that church were dug out or cut from that quarry or not, but someone told me the men of that church laid the foundation stones for that church. They were not only placing stones for a structure, they were building on the foundation of their faith that a church was a necessary part of that community of settlers at Bear Creek. In the text from Isaiah, God is reminding the people that God is the one thing that they should cling to, that even if the heavens and earth wear out and pass away, God's salvation will never fade away. The hymn built on a rock in verse 3 says, Christ builds a house of living stones. We are his own habitation. This is a living's faith, not one that occurred when God established Abraham and Sarah as the start of the chosen people, but a people that was supposed to serve as a beacon to draw others to place their trust in God as well. Today, we are part of those living stones carrying on the work of praising God and telling others about God's great love, mercy, and grace, and the promise of eternal life that comes to us from the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, and even here at our Savior's Lutheran Church. When I was in Jerusalem in 2009, I stayed for a month at a place called Tantour, which means hilltop, a learning center owned by Notre Notre Dame College. The rector in charge of the educational sessions brought in people of both Jewish and Islam faith to speak to to us about their respective faith and the conflicts in that region. The rector referred to the people who presented as living stones. They carried the history and stories of that area The Apostles' Creed that we confess together each Sunday was written to outline the foundations of our faith. We say it as a community of living stones to remind us of the Trinity where the Father is creator, Jesus as the Son of God, who was crucified, died, was buried, and rose from the dead, and the Holy Spirit who sustains us. Those are rock-solid things that we hold dear as Christians. So we turn to the gospel text from Matthew, and we find Jesus walking with his disciples as they come into the district of Caesarea Philippi. Now we get a clue as to what sets up this story. This district was named after the Roman Caesar Augustus, the head of the Roman government, the great power of the day. Herod the Great had built a temple there in honor of him, and Herod's son Philip was the tetrarch of this area and he had made made it the administrative capital of his government. It was on a busy trade route, and it had a long history of a place dedicated to various other gods. So the region represented commerce and pagan worship and power. Thus, Jesus' question, who do you say that I am, hangs in the air at the intersection of economic trade, religion, and the power of the empire? It is a question not simply about Jesus' identity. It is a question about allegiance. I'm grateful for this information about this region from the commentary of Assistant Professor Audrey West of the Moravian Theological Seminary in Pennsylvania. So that question that Jesus poses after they arrived at this region is a big one in the context of this particular place The disciples offer possible answers to Jesus' initial question of, who do people say that the Son of Man is? They give Jesus the responses of others to that question. But Jesus presses further with a question of, but who do you say that I am? Now he is probing beyond the answers of others. He is asking them a very personal question. It is the kind of question that when you're in school and a teacher asks in the classroom, you kind of, uh, that kind of puts you on the spot. The one you sink low in your desk or duck your head behind the person ahead of you so the teacher won't call on you for the answer. Of course, it is Peter, the boldest of the disciples that blurts out, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. Jesus responds, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, For flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. 
And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. Peter gets the classroom A. It is the correct answer. The church is to be built upon this confession of Peter that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God. Jesus knows it is an incomplete understanding by Peter, and he says that he knows that only God the Father could have placed this answer in Peter's head and heart and allowed him to voice this confession. Jesus calls him Peter, which means rock. So it's a play on Peter's name to tell him, on this rock, I will build my church. It is part of Jesus' plan to build the future on this fallible disciple who we know is impetuous, outspoken, and will, at Jesus' arrest and crucifixion, betray that he knows and follows him. Some rock, this one. But Jesus does plan to entrust the ongoing mission of sharing the message of love, sacrifice, resurrection, and grace once Jesus goes to heaven. This ministry of the future will be entrusted to Peter and the other very human disciples. So, whether it is Peter as the rock, or the confession he made, or maybe it is both, it is a rock-solid statement of Jesus. Over 2,000 years, the church has been standing and growing and developing. So back to that earlier statement I shared from the commentary by Professor West, it is a question about allegiance. After the confession, it remains to be seen what the answer means in terms of how it takes hold in Peter's life and in ours. What difference does it make that we confess Jesus Christ as our Savior and Lord? A story by Lindy Schneider titled Pauper to Princess. <coughs> College was a confusing place for me. I'd been raised in a loving Christian home and had been sheltered from the harshness of life. I was a little too naive for my own good. When I unpacked my boxes and suitcases from home and pinned my posters on the wall, I chose to leave the faith of my childhood packed away. I was eager to find my own way and discover my own beliefs apart from my parents. Here I would become an adult. I was eager to become wise and mature. At the university, I was exposed to many different philosophies and religious beliefs, and I studied them with great interest. I frequented every advertised lecture series that came on campus and was swayed by each prestigious speaker who took the podium. I boldly adopted new convictions and tossed aside old ones. With each new idea, I broke through personally held barriers, both in my thinking and in my actions. Everything was exciting and new, but I had an uneasy sense that my decisions were anchored in shifting sand and could change at any moment. My boyfriend of several years transferred from his college to mine so that we could be together. We, he, along with my new philosophies, pushed at my long-held boundaries. Because I no longer clung to the absolutes I had learned from the Bible, I was inclined to go along. But I began to feel used. I was losing something of myself and no longer felt loved and cherished as I had before. I felt very alone. In the past, I would have prayed for guidance, but I had tossed aside that practice, deeming it archaic. One evening, feeling very conflicted, I decided to go to a local church service. I listened to the pastor speak and the choir sing, but I felt I didn't belong there anymore. Perhaps God had tossed me aside too. When the final prayer was said, I stood up to walk back to my, do to my dorm, lost in my thoughts of desolation. Headed to the dorm, I turned to see who had spoken to me. It was Allie, a girl I knew only casually. She caught up to me and matched me stride for stride. She mentioned the service and how she liked what the pastor had to say. I didn't want to speak to anyone, so I hardly responded. My heart was heavy, thinking of the poor choices I had made and how bad I felt about myself. When we got to the steps of the dorm, I told Allie I lived on the third floor. She said she lived on the first, so I gave her a small smile and turned to part company. Allie smiled back and said, Okay, see ya, and remember, you're a princess. Her words startled me to attention. 
I could not have felt less like a princess than I did right then. I wheeled around to face her. What did you say, I asked? You're a princess. You're a child of the king. She replied, still smiling. I collapsed on the stairs leading up to my room, my body racked with sobs. Allie rubbed my shoulders, trying to find a way to comfort me. I don't know what's wrong, she said, but maybe you should read the considerate pure joy book. I had no idea what she meant, so she explained that the book of James in the New Testament talked a lot about going through trials and tough times and how God would be there with me through it all. I nodded and sprinted upstairs, still unable to speak. Back in the privacy of my room, I dug under my bed and pulled out the suitcase that had nothing left in it but my Bible. I began to read the book of James. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. I wanted to be more mature and complete more than anything. These words spoke to me as though written in a personal letter. I read on, If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. Here at college, I was listening to teachings from various conflicting sources, but God was telling me to come to him for wisdom. I read through most of the night, stopping occasionally to wipe tears away and pray for understanding. The morning came with new hope, courage, and joy. I never told Allie what a difference her simple statement made in my life. In fact, I don't even remember running into her again the rest of my college days. But she had reunited me with my best friend, Jesus. From that moment forward, I read the Bible and weighed each of my decisions against the rock that doesn't change. I was reminded of how much I was loved, and I knew that God, my Father, the King, was welcoming me back home. Just one story of the rock that is our solid foundation in life. We are all part of that quarry that Isaiah stated that we were hewn from. Let us all stand on that solid rock of our faith and let it be a basis for our allegiance in our lives. It is my prayer for all of us that this rock of faith give us strength and inform our actions throughout our journey in this earthly life. Amen.
ask the congregation to please stand as you are able at this time as we join in our affirmation of faith using the United Church of Canada Creed. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is created, who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect and creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus, crucified and risen, our judge and our hope, in life, in death, in life beyond death. God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. I invite you all to pray with me, and the congregational response to hear us, O God, will be, your mercy is great. Confident that God receives our joys and concerns, let us offer our prayers for the church, those in need, and all of creation. Let us pray. God of Sarah and Abraham, inspire your church to pursue righteousness in its ministry. Equip us to share your compassion that unites us as one family of faith. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Remind us that from the beginning of creation, you knit together a world meant for harmony. Protect and restore the wasted places to joy and gladness. Grant farmers good weather and safety. We pray for the victims of wildfires and those assisting on the island of Maui. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Stir the leaders of nations and states and towns to respond to your teachings. Let us call for justice. Reach all the peoples and bring deliverance where there is oppression present. We pray for the people of Ukraine, Syria, Haiti, Palestine, and all people throughout the world living in fear or oppression. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Show your steadfast love and faithfulness to those in despair. Increase their strength. Care for all who feel low, those experiencing trouble and change, and protect the vulnerable people from harm. Walk with those living with health challenges, especially Todd, Dick, Crew, Anita, Natalia, Jan, Linda, Hank, Joe, Pastor Mandy, Lowell, Norma, and all others whom we name in our hearts. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Encourage those who offer their gifts and talents and service to your church. Energize this congregation's rostered and lay leaders, musicians, teachers, greeters, and administrators, so they may be transformed in sharing your grace. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of all saints, death is overcome in Christ's resurrection. As the faithful departed, no joy their loved ones no grief and loss. Hold them close, O Father. Sustain us in hope until we come at last to our heavenly home. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Into your hands, O God, we commend all for whom we pray in the name of the one who has reconciled all creation unto himself, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. And then with that, I'll invite you to all share a sign of Christ's peace to your neighbor.
And now with this, we have uh, arrived at our announcements. And so the first announcement will be that the Our Savior's Lutheran uh, Choir will be starting here in September, on Sunday, uh, September 10th at 1015. And we encourage all those who are interested to join the dedicated, talented, and fun group in praising God and enhancing our worship services here at Our Savior's Lutheran. So if you would like to join this fall, please feel free and uh, call Elliot at 507-346-7882, and that is in the bulletin. Um, in addition to this, uh, the OSL Jubilee bells ready to ring. Uh, this will be on Wednesday, September 6th, and uh, they will begin their performance and rehearsal season for the 2023-24 uh, worship season. And bell rehearsals will be held at Wednesday uh, from 5.45 to 6.45. And they typically perform uh, at worship once a month and occasionally for special concerts and events. So if you're invited to join this group, uh, you need to be able to read music and have a keen uh, sense of rhythm. And Elliot is available for additional questions that uh, should come up. And, in, and finally, uh, summer evening worship services uh, uh, last day will be August 31st at 5.30, and fall worship services will begin on Saturday, September 9th at 5.30. And with that, are there any additional announcements that I may have left out? Funeral on Tuesday. Oh, oh there is a funeral on Tuesday for uh, who again? Oh, uh, speak up. Leave a, I can't hear. Okay, there's a funeral uh, on Tuesday, I guess. I, I can't really hear. <laughs> we have all the Sunday school teachers needed. All the Sunday school teachers needed. That's, that's a reason to rejoice. forward and we'll sing the offering song as uh, shown on the screen. Let us pray the offering prayer. God of all creation, all you have made is good, and your love endures forever. You bring forth bread from the earth and fruit from the vine. Nourish us with these gifts that we might be for the world signs of your gracious presence in Jesus Christ, our Savior. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and grace. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, when he had given thanks, he gave them the cup and said, This is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people. Drink of it, all of you, in the, and remember me. We pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Taste and see that the Lord is good.
Now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. God of abundance, with this bread of life and cup of salvation, you have united us with Christ, making us one with all your people. Now send us forth in the power of your Spirit, that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. And our sending song is God be with you till we meet again. And I guess any children who are here or even big children can come up and get some instruments to accompany this. So. Go in peace, share the good news.